So you have Microsoft 365. What does that involve? What do you actually get in the box? For most people, and uh, most of the clients that we sort of initially start working with, all they see is Outlook, Word, Excel, and PowerPoint. Yes, I'm talking about the applications you install on your PC or Mac. Right? These are the applications that most people are familiar with when they talk about Microsoft Office or Microsoft 365. But that's just the tip of the iceberg. These are just the tools we use in order to be able to access the systems and all the content that you're going to store in Microsoft's cloud-based platform. Cloud is just another fancy word for someone else's computer. In this case, Microsoft's. The best way to go and explore to see what products and services you have access to is by jumping across here to Microsoft365.com or Office.com will get you there as well. You go there, put in your details. Now, if you've got a personal license, uh, you know, through either a family plan or, or an individual plan, uh, you'll also get access to some of the tools that are in here. But for most of what I'm talking about, this is the business level services. So business standard, um, business basic, business premium, or any one of the E3 or E5 licenses. And there's also some others for not-for-profits and for education providers. The point is, is that go and see what you have access to. This is your starting point, your dashboard, the center of your universe, if you like. And you can see all the files you've been working on. We can quickly go and see what might have been shared, anything I've favorited. I can upload files directly here. If you upload, they go straight into OneDrive. I'll get to that in a moment. Um, and you can sort of see anything that's been highlighted. You can also install applications if you happen to have that license. Uh, business Basic does not allow you install licenses. You need Business Standard and above to be able to get access to that. But more importantly, there's a button here called Create. This is where you can go and get access to um, predefined templates that you can use as a starting point to get yourself started. You used Canva or any one of those sort of creative applications? Same concept, right? Start with a template. It's been around for a while, but most people don't take advantage of this. But more importantly, we can see the different types of things we can create from documents, presentations, and workbooks, which are your, from your staple of Word, uh, PowerPoint, and Excel. Most people are familiar with these. But the next ones, we start talking about forms and quizzes. Now, forms are really useful for you to be able to create a form or a survey form to collect data from someone. It's got a little bit of some uh, analytics in there. And so you can get some feedback on how well you did with something. If you deliver a course, it's a great way to capture some feedback, for example, of how well you did. It's also useful for serving your clients to see, do you like us or do you not? And what can we improve? You've seen all these surveys? It's in the box. You, you don't have to pay for it. It's there available for you. The next one is, is quizzes. Now, quizzes is really designed for the education market, um, but it can also be used for you to be able to survey, say, new starters or onboarders to under make sure they understand um, the requirements of doing their job. For example, you might also use it for a safety order or a um, some other uh, compliance capabilities that you need to quickly determine whether or not the information that I've just read sunk in. The other ones are pages and notebooks. These are f driven for OneNote. If you've seen, um, if you like collecting notes and you want to get rid of you know, your paper-based things, then have a look at OneNote and turn those into a digital-based uh, environment. Microsoft also has a new app, which is still in preview, called Loop, which is a little bit more than what just OneNote is doing. It'll be interesting to see where Microsoft takes that. Another one which has actually been around inside of the SharePoint product, which is a core platform or core app inside or core platform inside of the Microsoft ecosystem, and that's Lists. Now, they've actually brought it out and extended it so it's got an application interface of its own, and this is where you can go that next level in terms of capturing data um, that you might have used in Excel, for example. You might have a register or something like a project register or a register of books or other assets. You can turn those into a list. And the main reasons you'd want to do that is that a list can actually constrain 
what fields are required and what types of data needs to go into those those fields. You can also create uh, composite fields that is done on calculations and even reference other lists to start building up a database-like environment. Even better, it's all web-based and every single record has its own version history and controls associated with that that can then be plugged into automation. I don't know if you heard of a product called uh, Airtable, etc. then lists may be a good substitute for that. Then we go across into pages. This is where we start looking at Sway, right? Now, a lot of people don't quite understand how Sway works. They think it's a, like a presentation, but it's more of a, um, a dynamic online sort of brochure where you can go and sort of interact with uh, different content. Think of it as a one page sort of uh, type content. Uh, then we've got drawings. Now, if you've heard of the Visio app, right? This is where you can do um, flow charts and um, diagrams and swim lanes and all that sort of stuff for actually drawing out all these um, particular applications. Now, a lot of people think that Visio is PC only. Well, it is in terms of the desktop app. However, there's a web-based version for you that you get in all the standard business licenses. It's in the box. You don't have to go and pay for yet another system to be able to get access to creating your flow charts, organizational charts, or other things. It's right there in the browser. The other one is Stream. Now, Stream, I liken it to being a um, your own private YouTube studio. You can do 15-minute um, videos with a whole range of different types of content that you can put on that um, thing, you know, from different backgrounds, from different um, frames. You can even screen share and create content like what I'm creating now. I'm actually using a program called OBS but you can actually use Stream to create a similar type environment and it all works within your browser. And because it's built into the, the uh, Microsoft ecosystem, once those files are saved, you can then share that with anyone depending on your permissions. Um, it will also do live transcription and allow you to break your content up into multiple chapters to make it easy for people to navigate through, all right? So they don't have to scroll through all of that. You can also do just plain screen recordings. This is a very popular one. A lot of people use this and we encourage our clients to do the same, to use the screen recording to explain how their business works and, exp and, um, and explain and show people how things happen. Um, then we come across to posts, which is Yammer. Now Yammer is sort of like a Facebook at work type environment. If you're uh, familiar with how Facebook works, think of this as your private Facebook place without all the advertising and other distractions that Facebook might have. It works in a similar manner. Now, typically we see Yammer being deployed or used in larger organizations with multiple regions or regional offices. Finally, we come across into Power BI. Power BI is an incredible data analytics engine. It allows you to visualize and dashboard things, etc. You can overlay data sets onto maps, etc. And such like. So, if you've got a data a budding diet, a scientist in your business and wants to take it beyond what you can do in Excel and produce um, dashboards that can go be loaded within your environment, Power BI is where you want to go. Uh, finally, we come up with whiteboard. We all know how a whiteboard works. You've been in a meeting room and someone will grab a pen and they'll start drawing ideas and such like up on a whiteboard. But we do this digitally. Well, there's a digital whiteboard. We can actually do this and capture this in real time. And whiteboard is usually coupled with Teams meetings. So you can actually have a digital whiteboard and everyone can be drawing on it at the same time and, and ideating and coming up with ideas. So that's what's in the box. Go and explore and start taking advantage of some of these tools before you go out and look at third-party solutions that are outside of your Microsoft ecosystem. Next time, I'm going to dive into uh, OneDrive, SharePoint, and Teams, why you want to use them, and how they all fit together. All right, bye for now.